Hi everyone, I am uh, got the base out now for the time machine, and uh, this comes from Masterpiece Models, and it's all one unit. Older kits, you had to assemble all this, so they made it easier. This is all one piece now, and uh, we're getting ready to attach all the uh, pedestal leg section. So that's what I'm working on doing next. I'm going to probably use super glue. It is not strong by itself, but if you add the, probably the cornstarch I'll add to it and make a thicker mix. This stuff is very hard to sand. It's like resin. Uh, works really good. And I'll, I'll get this attached and we'll go from there. I don't know if I Ever, if you ever done this or not, but if you use the cornstarch and the uh, super glue together, that stuff is some good stuff. If you ever want to do some customization on a model car kit and want to flare the the uh, fender wells, whatever, you mix this up, and the thicker you mix it, you can get it to a nice thickness. It'll turn to like a milky white, and you got time to work with it and won't set up automatically. You can thicken it up to like a nice thickness. And I use that and I'll apply on there where I need it. Use it for gap filling and all kinds of stuff you can use it for. It's pretty nice. Looks pretty good. Secure it down just a little bit more. Filling in a little bit around the uh, edge of it. Looks pretty good. Already glued it on the bottom side of the uh, of these. I'd already done put it on the bottom of these. Okay, now that I got it done in there, I'll take a little napkin or something, and just kind of wipe off the excess off the outside. Basically filling in the gaps. And there we go, we got four of them mounted. If you want, you can use the zapper to speed up anything if you want to hit it. There we go. Perfect. Came out great. That'll work. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take it outside and I'm going to get it some primer put on it. I got some other stuff to show you today that I got that came in the mail that I'm making a very cool diorama when I get done with this. And uh, I'll show you some other progress stuff I've done. So let me go out there and get this primed. Okay, I got some primer laid on. Got that done. I just used a primer sealer on there. And what I did, 
on top here I wanted to look like real wood so I took some uh, 36 sandpaper laid my primer on here and then I went back and put my grooves in it so you know when I paint it and I do a wash on there that's gonna look like real wood then when I clear it it should look pretty good you know, I got to build up the clear a little bit when I get it done but it should look like real wood it's a sub you can do or you could paint it and simulate it but I thought I'd try this to see how it goes like I said I just go one direction and you would uh, put the lines in there a little bit of primer I had to get that on there I first did it without it but now I can see how I want my texture to look you know so with that done, then you can go back in it, get your grooves, and try to make them like wood looking, you know, like a uniform like wood. To get a uh, wood look to it. I'm probably not going to do the bottom side because you're not going to see that, but I will do this to it. So it should look pretty good. And we'll see how that looks. I'll probably go over it with black just so it'll get a dark base and work light on that part. And we'll go from there. Okay, now that I got it shot black, you can kind of see that it's going to simulate wood when you get get to painting it and stuff. You can see the, what that's going to kind of look like. So, that's my little take I'm going to try and see how it goes. Now that I got that, I'll shoot this bottom side. I want to test this out and make sure my polyurethane, before I get too involved in it, doesn't lift over the black lacquer here. So I'm going to check that on the bottom, see what happens. And stay tuned. Okay, I shot some, the black lacquer on there and I did shoot a little polyurethane just on one little spot. I wanted to see if it would lift. And it didn't. I should have washed it a little bit more right through here. On the bottom side, I did get a little, you know, fish eyes a little bit right here where I didn't wash it. I should have uh, probably Dawn dish soaped that a little bit better. But it would be alright because I'm, I'm not done with it anyway. So I just wanted to test it out. But like I said, uh, that's the black lacquer on the bottom. And the polyurethane went over it fine and didn't lift or nothing. So I'm good to go as far as that goes. I'm going to let this dry. And then I'm going to simulate this into wood too when I get done here. I'm just testing this stuff out. Make sure you ain't got no reactions of your paint. Because some brands of paint don't save with lacquer or enamel. So it's better to check it out and test some things. But yep. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what I've been working on for this past week. I got this 3D printed ball that uh, Lou had made and uh, a friend of mine named Gary 3D printed this box that fits perfectly for the motor when you slide it in and so what I did is uh, got it so it won't churn on you so that's locked in and I got it glued at the bottom now I gotta run my wiring for the brake light and then I'm gonna Epoxy this in a little bit better and even even stronger, but it ain't going nowhere now uh, I got this I think pretty well centered and I gotta drill my holes uh, And then I'll take this all loose and clean it all back up again, but um, I decided that uh, I think It was running too fast, you know, so I'm gonna have it at a certain speed I'm gonna mount this potentiometer on the bottom it's got adjustable knob on the bottom of my model but uh, it's still going to operate on the console with the stick but I can set the speed that I want the final 
maximum speed to be set at. That way, uh, it won't get out of hand, you know, or break anything. I, I kind of want to see it move so where you can see the detail of all the uh, decals and stuff. So I don't want it going too fast. But I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration of what I got going on here. So you can kind of see it. Let me back the camera up a little bit more, maybe, or turn this up maybe just a little bit more. So you can see this rotating. I think I got it off. I'll have to turn it on a little bit. And I do. So we'll turn it up a little bit here and I'll have to turn it back down. I give a little more juice. The good thing is I can set the speed where I want it to go. See, I could have it turn very slow if I wanted to. I'll probably get more than that out of it. That's not going to be my maximum speed. I'll set up a little bit higher. A little bit more. See, there's a, a maximum speed I could probably have. Or I can lower it down just by simply turning this down a little bit more. I could have it to where I want it. This might be my maximum speed. But I kind of just want to see the detailing, you know, moving. It's a little wobbly this way a little bit. The reason why I got that is I got to get, there's two Allen screws on this hub. And I got to get my flat spot done on the shaft itself. So when I tighten it up, it, it'll level out it flat. But the, I laid this down and heated this up, the dish. I laid it out in the concrete, heated it up, then cooled it with a cold rag. I took a heat gun around, I pushed on it and see where it was warped at. Oh yeah, this here too, you can see how the motor fits inside the box there. And it fits perfectly in there. And uh, when I get the rear cap on, I'm just going to lightly glue this if I ever have a problem. I can pull the cap off and pull the whole motor out and replace the motor if I had to. Hopefully I never had to do that, but I think it's a pretty powerful motor. Uh, I got the one that Phil uses. And, uh, like I said, it, it's going to look really cool. So, once I get this part figured out, then I'm going on from there. I'm going to have it so it either run on a 12-volt uh, power supply or a 9-volt battery. I'm going to have it so you can do either or. In case I want to take it somewhere, they don't have a place to plug it in or whatever. But, uh, there you go. So that part's pretty much figured out. Now I got to start constructing the generator and make it strong enough to support all this. And this is the original, uh, this is the uh, masterpiece model kit that I'm working on. And you know, they make a fine electronic kit too if somebody wants to get that kit there with the clear pieces it, it is an awesome one i just figured i'd just try this challenge that those guys did uh phil offers a uh not phil but wayne sorry wayne offers a uh, program he designed to work with a nano arduino and uh he was graciously enough to share that with us so that's what I'm working on. Now, if I turn this up more, it would be cranking. I really don't want it to go, you know, it's like super fast. I'll turn it up a little bit. See, I don't want it to run like that. I think it's just too much. I just want it just enough to where I can, you know, get what I want out of it. I don't want it too powerful. So, once that's said, like I said, I'll shut, I'll mount this on the bottom my tip pinch of the armor here. I'm going to mount that on the bottom and I'll set the speed of how I want the overall speed to. Yeah, I know it could go into the program and do that too on the Arduino, but I don't want to mess with that. I want to have it to where I can control it myself. So, but uh, I'll set my speed that I want the final speed to be at, but I'll use the potentiometer on the console to make it stop and go. Just wanted to share that with you. 
the shafts got to be cut down and stuff like that but that's just a part in the testing part working on it so um thanks to lou and gary for giving me some help here i did use a brass a brass shaft inside here and these motors are available that you can get and uh that's all for that part okay I wanted to play a little show you what I got going on here these figures here are 1 6 scale they got the Morlock at Wendy and I have the other figure coming but it's not molded yet but they're working on it but this is all 1 6 scale in scale with the time machine and I'm gonna do the last scene there in the movie with the kind of the cave with the time machine going when I get it all done just wanted to give you a picture let you see some of these uh, figurines and they're awesome fantastic job on them and uh, you kind of see the Morlock air and it comes with this uh, cool base and I'll show you a little bit see the Morlock air and her likeness is very 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 good it's got kind of really cool skulls and bones and there's skulls and bones in the base here and I'm planning on doing the time machine like a cave type of scene and just to give you a little just what it's gonna look like that's a pretty good size you can see my hand in here in the view maybe so you can see a look it's gonna be very cool always wanted to build something like this so that's what the goal is Like again, I wanted to say these are from Academy Works, the figures. And uh, you can find them on eBay, 1-6 scale figures. Uh, they also make a time machine, uh, too, and two different scales, 1-8 scale and this. And uh, also, Masterpiece Replicas makes an awesome uh, scale of the uh, prop scale of the little time machine that was used in the movie size and it's fantastic too so either choice you make is a fantastic kits like I said this is the masterpiece replicas that I'm building uh, so far I'm liking it as you can see now it's gonna look good with the green once I get to painting all that too with the chair Anyways, I wanted to show you that, so I'll show you some more progress as I paint.
Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to use the same colors that I used on the chair, which would be the, the brown for a number of light color. I might use a little terracotta. I got a little bit of uh, ivory that I might use for highlighting or something. And then I got a espresso, espresso like brown color. These are all available at Walmart. Once again, I'll show you that again. That's the uh, brown. And a little bit of black here, so you can see that. A little bit of black. Might use a little bit of that too, probably when I do my wash at the end. <clears throat> I got kind of a big painter's brush today because I got a little wider area to do. I usually have a piece of cardboard around so I can get the paint out of there so I can get a mist when I start doing my dry brushing and stuff. So first I'll probably get a little bit of ivory, a little bit of brown. I'll probably take and go over here. Kind of get to where it's just streaking out. When you get your cardboard here, you just want to get towards this kind of starting to mist. You don't want it heavy. Just keep doing it so it starts looking kind of dry. I don't know if you can see that at all, probably matching the cardboard. But anyhow, you just want it kind of dry, so you're going to dry brush is what we're going to do. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You can see, you got the beautiful grain I did, I did on there. And we start hitting this sucker. You should start seeing it come to life here a little bit. You want to go against the grain. It's going to take a little bit of a while for the paint to get built up in there. There we go. And what we're going to do, just, I don't know if you can see that a little bit. Just going to go in there and start brushing it in. And it's going to take a little bit to get it covered. Not gonna happen right off the bat. But you can start to see how it's starting to look like wood. Some dry brushing going on. I'm gonna do washes on it when I get done too. After I get the color kind of in where I want it. Some on the sides a little bit, you can kind of see it going on. Some dry brushing. It's starting to get better looking. So you see I'm going across the grain. I'm not really 
you don't want to go with it I'm going across it I'm just building up paint Usually I like a more of a stiffer brush too, so I might get a stiffer one here. I might grab a stiffer brush. <laughs> Be a little too stiff on that one. too stiff. Let me get a different one. Let me pause this for a second. Okay, here we go. This is a nice stiff brush I got from over at Hobby Lobby. A little more stiffer bristle. That's kind of like what you want when you're dry brushing a little bit. You want to just get it out there when it's streaking a little bit. And then start applying your paint again. If you can see that, I'll try to do it so you can see. And just keep doing this and you build up the paint a little at a time. Takes your time there and it'll come out looking really good. You can start to see now it's starting to look like wood. And don't worry about these cross and stuff. You won't see that when I get done here. We'll do some washes and stuff after I get the color all in that we want. some paint to build this up. Yeah, I'm going a little bit with the lines. Just a little bit to get the paint in there. The war should make the wood all come to life. I might put a little bit of terracotta. A little bit of brown. Dry brushing, more dry brushing. I'll get this paint on here, you know, like I said, I'll get it layered to where I want it to look like on the wood far as it goes. And then I'm going to seal it with some uh, Tester's Dog Coat. I'll spray over that just to seal it. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes I do it 
kind of locks the paint down so when you do washes on it if you decide you don't like what you've got going on you can wipe it up it's kind of better to at least put a coat of that on there we're going to eventually end up putting the polyurethane over it you know to make it like wood but locking your detail in and all that And just keep doing it till you like it, till it looks the way you want it to look. Chair is going to cover quite a bit of this up, anyways. And the uh, generator and the other components. But, get in there like that. So, uh, dry. Try to get the camera where you can see there. Dry brushing this. Go around here and dry brush it. Probably instead of using lacquer, uh, I should just use flat black primer, but I didn't have none at the time. So, but if you got flat black primer, that's what I would probably would have went with. It doesn't matter. It's just going to get coated and all that stuff when I'm done. And basically, you just got to take your time and build it up for the paint to build up and stuff. Take some time on it. Not really going to see down here anyways, but I'll do a little bit. Starting to get there. And in between this, I'll take my heat gun after I get a coating on here and I'll dry it. Kind of speed up the process a little bit. I'll try and spare you the uh, <laughs> annoying noise from it. I'll pause it and show you some more. Get just a coating over it and just keep building it up, building it up. Kind of follow the woodwork with the wood grain. Get 
get a basic color coded in there. Kind of follow the body shape of it, and I keep the lines kind of going that way with it to look like real wood. And the process is just keep painting it, painting it until you get to where you want it. Kind of take the brush strokes, kind of make it like wood on that part. I'm going to pause it and take my hair dryer to it. Uh, or heat gun, should say not a hair dryer, but heat gun. Okay. Yeah, I got it dry. So, keep doing some more on it. I need some more paint. And... So we just want to get the color in. We can go a little bit with the lines we need to. Anything to get it in there. Just keep coating it. This is fine going this way too, really. Because you're going to do a wash of it anyways and all the grain will pop. sides again sides again just get that color in it looks like a process of just building up paint Cause if you look in there, you can still see the scratches are all in there still. And that stuff's going to pop when you do a wash over it. Did 
Just same method you could use for doing bases too if you got a wooden floor you want to create ship you're working on or something. For a minute, probably some more brown in there. That's enough for right now. Go around the edges again. Tear it down in there. On the edges some more. A little bit on here. Some more on here. On the leg. Like I said, you don't have to do it all one day, too. I mean, if you want to just do it when you get some free time, do a little on there and stop and do it another day. You just do a little each day uh, and get it done. Like I said, I got it, a coat on here again, and I'm going to dry it again with the uh, heat gun. Just to kind of speed the process up a little bit. These are water-based acrylics, if you don't know. You can get them at Walmart, Myers, Hobby Lobby. Okay. I'm going to pause it again here. And we're gonna dry it some more. Okay, got it dry again. Now I'm gonna apply some more paint here. Just paint some more around here on the bottom side again. And just keep building the paint up. Just keep the same direction. And like I said, I'm not too worried about any repair because it's not going to be seen as much. 
so far. I know it's there. I think I'm gonna try it one more time and I think I'm gonna shoot some uh, flat mat testers acrylic over it that way I'm not taking a bunch of paint off as I'm putting it on too and then uh, if I don't like something I can wipe it off so I'm gonna pause it take it outside and spray it okay got the top all sprayed with the testers dog coat so I'm back to Got that done. Now I'm going to work a little bit more on the bottom here. I'm going back to this brush. Whoops. This brush here for a little bit. Just to cover. Get some more covered on here. Just kind of lay it on here and streak it. way there we go sorry about that this way okay. I'll go back to this brush probably Now the leg pedestals on or the leg supports for the base here. I'm gonna probably decorate it like the rest of the uh, time machine chair with a little bit of gold and all that stuff, and I'll go and do some blacks in there just to make it look fancy. Check out this side here, make sure I got these all good. Looks like I got them. Okay. I think it's covered pretty good. I'll go try it one more time, then I'm gonna spray me some dog coat over this. Okay, now that I got it all coated and everything's dried off here, I will proceed from there. Okay, I'm going to take some gold here. I take in, this is the uh, same one I use on the, uh, on the chair, the pure gold. I'm going to highlight 
some of the bottom of, of the uh, pedestal legs. Get some on here and get it streaking out. I'm just taking dry brush it out to get kind of dry looking. And that's when you want to start putting this on here. And then you can kind of start seeing it starts coming right over life. By the way. Like that to start coming to life with the gold. gold but it looks, it looks like bronze you know what I'm saying put some on there some more on the side Let's see that. I'll probably go I'll add some more wood color back into it a little bit but I'm just gonna highlight some of it And this piece right here on here is supposed to be a caster wheel. So probably when they rolled it around on the set between takes, they rolled it around to different areas on the set. And they were filming it. here I'll probably take some water and do me a little black wash here on it some more water and just kind of let it flow between the inside around there you can see that and I'll do the same thing here I'll just let it flow between here we'll go on the bottom part It'll, it'll just go down to the lowest part of the areas. Just add a little contrast. Sorry about that. See a little bit what I'm doing a little bit better. let it flow in there. That's what you call a wash. And just kind of go into the lowest parts of the uh, areas. That's where you want the flow into. You can see right here, I'll do it again here. Let it go in there. More water, let it flow a little bit around here. And if you don't, it's too much, you can wipe it off, won't hurt nothing. Let's 
plug that. Highlight there. Get a little more water. underneath here. And it kind of helps that pop in there. Look good. Let's take some black and I'll probably go ahead and paint the caster wheel. paint the caster wheel. Yeah, if you make a little boo-boo, just <laughs> take a little water and just hit it right there a little bit. A little paper towel. And just wipe it off. There you go. There you go. Let's touch it back up in a minute. Let's go paint the other side. Now, I'll paint the caster wheel on this side. I do like when they add all these details in there, you know, when they add the caster wheels and everything that, you know, that was on the original prop. You know, they did their homework and stuff in detail. Very cool. Okay, now I got that done. I'll probably let this set over night and then I'll pick up where I left off here. And so now you can kind of see what we got going on here. I'll let this dry really good. And I'll, I'll probably end up putting some more wood color in here too. 
Okay. Okay. Just wanted to show you guys. I got the uh, first coat of uh, polyurethane. And uh, it's going to take a couple coats and stuff and some sand in between. So I'm going to leave this first coating on there. Let it dry. You can see the legs underneath here. And it looks like wood too, you know, as you can see now. I did do a wash over the top of it, which I just mixed the water and the black and did a wash over it. Now I'm uh, going to let this dry. I'll just let you look up close, you can see the green. It's going to look like wood when it's done. And now uh, here's what I'm using for the clear. I'm using a uh, Minute Max polyurethane fast drying clear gloss. This stuff works really, really good. That's what I use for the chair. And I uh, highly recommend it. Like I said, you can see it's got a nice shine to it. Now I'm just going to build it up the layers and sand them. That's it for today. Thank you.